In today's video, we're going to change the oil and filters in the Detroit Diesel Series 60 in my Prevo. This video came about because of a viewer request, and so I want to just say how much I appreciate both comments that everybody puts down, I read virtually all of them, and then also the suggestions for videos for things that you'd like to see. A lot of times when I'm doing work, I don't necessarily think that uh, what I'm doing is worthy of a video or that it would be interesting to the audience, and a lot of times I'm then also proven wrong when I get requests for the exact sort of thing that I wasn't planning on doing a video on. So. Uh, even if you think it's something I might already be doing, or if I've done a similar video in the past, leave a comment down below. Uh, there's always a new twist to put on, and I really like uh, finding out what it is that you viewers want to see. So specifically, the request was my thoughts on how I go about doing an oil change, and uh, the thought that I put into the oil, the filters, the things like that. This is actually the first change that I'm doing on my Series 60. When I bought this, it had a fairly recent oil change on it, so there wasn't a need to do one immediately, but now it's time. So I actually had to do some digging and figure out what I wanted to do and what others do on Series 60 oil changes. Like with most fluid changes, the most important thing is that you're actually doing it. But especially since I had the request for this video, I did do a little bit of digging to figure out what I wanted to go with and why. On my previous RV, this was actually a little bit simpler. I just went to the cat dealer, bought the cat oil and the cat filters, and put those on. Detroit Diesel does sell their own oil and filters, but it seems like on these engines, it's less common to use them. From the oil perspective, there were two things that I was trying to figure out. The first one was, what grade should I go with? The standard is 15W40, but I was looking to see if a 5W40 uh, would make sense to put in. I did find some references to people using 5W40 in their Series 60, but there's very few of them, and there's really very little as far as references go from Detroit diesel manuals that seem to indicate a 5W40 is considered to be acceptable or okay. At the hot end, a 5W40 should still be just about as thick as a 15W40, and then it should only be thinner on the colder end of the spectrum. But with all of the references that were indicating a 15W40 seemed to be the preferred oil grade, that's what I decided to go with. The next question was which one? Uh, there were a few things that played into this. One of them had to do with cost and also ability to get it in a five gallon pail. Obviously quality of the oil matters, but also cost and the ability to get the oil in a five gallon pail was important because you're talking about 10 gallons worth of oil that this thing takes. After doing a little bit of digging, I decided that the two options I was going to consider was your standard Shell Rotella 15W40 and then alternately a Mobile Delvac uh, 15W40. I ended up going with Mobile Delvac Extreme 15W40 and there were a couple of reasons for this. The first one was that I was able to get it from Summit Racing for $95 in a five gallon bucket. When you buy two of them, that gets you over the $100 threshold for free shipping. Mobile yeah. was also running a $25 rebate on five gallon pails of this oil at the time that I purchased it. So that was gonna bring the effective cost from $95 down to $70. Unfortunately, once I read the fine print, that was only limited to one five gallon pail per household. So I ended up only getting the $70 pail on one. The process for the mail-in rebate was also really cumbersome, and honestly, it is probably the worst experience I've had with a mail-in rebate, but finally got approved, and I'm getting 25 bucks back. The other option I was considering was your standard Shell Rotella 15W40. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a great oil. It gets used in pretty much every diesel under the sun, and it's $70 for a five-gallon pail of it. Uh, I decided that the Mobile Delvac Extreme looked like it had a little bit better protection, a little bit better capability at higher temperatures, and also it is a full synthetic oil instead of a conventional oil. I like synthetic oils wherever you can use them. There is some debate on whether you should use a synthetic oil in an engine that has been using conventional oil previously, but I've never seen any issues with it. I know some people say they have. The next question was what filter to go with, and just like oil, there's a whole lot of different options that exist out there. I ended up deciding to go with a Fleet Guard filter. Fleet Guard filters are made by Cummins. They're still a very high quality filter, and a lot of people use them in their diesel engines of all types whether it's for fuel, oil, anything else. I've got fleet guard filters that I use in the fuel filter on this, which I'll do a separate video on, and I decided that this was gonna be a good option. Fleet Guard offers several different filter options for the Series 60. I ended up going with the highest one, which is an LF9620. There's a standard one that's uh, significantly cheaper, and then they've got a middle grade one that's somewhere in between. But what Fleet Guard says the benefit of the 9620 is, is that it combines the benefits of a full flow oil filter and a bypass flow oil filter. If you're not familiar with bypass flow oil filters, 
the way that they are supposed to work is that a smaller amount of oil, not the full amount that comes through the oil pump, but just a smaller amount, goes through a filter that has a significantly finer micron mesh in it and is therefore able to get more particles out of it. By getting more particles out of the oil, it can potentially extend the life of the oil and it can also help to reduce wear on your engine. If you drive an RV like, like I do, you probably are going to run into the calendar limitation of needing to change your oil every year as opposed to the mileage limitation of 12,500 miles or wanting to extend it further. But I like putting the best filters that I can on anything that I care about because particles getting through your engine going into places that they shouldn't can kill things very quickly and can also shorten the life of them. If I was using this filter and this oil combination in a semi-truck where it was getting a whole lot more miles, I'd probably be able to take oil samples and get extended drain intervals out of them. But as it is, I'm planning on replacing these at the standard 12,500 mile mark or every year, and I'm probably not going to bother with oil samples. But that brings up another point that I'll touch on briefly, which is the subject of oil samples. I used to work in the aviation industry, and in aviation as well as in semi-truck industries and other things like that, oil samples can be a popular way to keep track of your engine's uh, health and look for indications that a significant issue might be coming due to metal wear. There's merit to all of this, however, it's not something that I've ever personally done on my vehicles. If oil sampling is something that you want to do, there are a couple of things that are important. One, choose a particular lab and stick with that lab so that your analysis of those samples is consistent. The other thing that's important is to make sure that you do actually get consistent samples with every oil change or at some specified interval of time. With oil samples, what you're really looking for is not usually particular numbers from one sample, but trends that indicate that problems are going to start occurring. Your samples can be different from time to time just based off of things like whether the engine was sitting, where you were driving it, things of that nature. And the most common problem that I've seen with oil samples is that people will just send in a single sample and then say, what's wrong with my engine? If you're going to do oil samples, that's the wrong way to do it. You need to have a consistent basis. You need to understand what the normal is, and then that will show you when there's a deviation from the norm. There are several companies out there that do oil samples, and most of them will send you packets that you buy that will let you catch a little bit of oil as you're draining it out and then send it in. So now that we've gone through the basis, let's get the filters off, let's get the oil draining, and let's put some new oil in. All right, so here we are under the bus. One thing I forgot to mention, make sure that you've got your bus properly supported before you get underneath it as always. Uh, I think I referenced my video on how to jack up a bus in every video I've made since, but it is important for safety. So one thing that I did forget to mention uh, earlier was that you do need two oil filters. Uh, these larger diesels tend to have uh, two of them. So now you also are going to need a large oil filter wrench. I have one and then I couldn't find it. So what I've got instead are my vice grips with the chain on them. And let's see if I can make this work. All right, there we go. Get that on. All right, that actually came off, came loose surprisingly easily, which is, I guess, better than the often alternative, although it leaves me a little suspicious that it was tightened correctly. Now I've just got my oil pan underneath, and let's get this off. While I'm spinning this off, I will note that a lot of people say that the best thing to do is to have the engine uh, at operating temperature when you uh, change the oil, both because the oil comes out easier and then also because uh, it makes sure that the oil has been running through the engine so that you don't have any uh, particulates sitting at the bottom. That is good advice. I just never do it because I don't like dealing with hot oil and it's kind of a pain. So I've never had any issues from it. may have seen that these filters that I took off were the LF3620s. Uh, that's the base fleet guard filter, not the upgraded one that I'm putting back on. Uh, just like whenever you take a, an old oil filter off, you want to make sure that the O-ring came off as well with it. I can see up there clearly that uh, the O-rings did come off. And although those are a little bit looser than I would have liked them to be, uh, they weren't leaking, so I guess I can't complain too much. So now what you can't see is I'm putting just a little smudge smear of oil on the uh, new filter 
and I'm just gonna spin this one on get it tight and then get it hand tight do about a quarter turn I guess that's a little bit more than that and that's just fine and then do the same thing with the other one one other thing I'll just make a note of while I'm uh, putting this oil filter on I never pre-fill my oil filters and this is something that there's a lot of debate on the theory is that if you pre-fill your oil filters then uh, your engine will not have any time with that oil pressure or less time with that oil pressure when you start it back up the other side of that is that if you pre-fill your oil filter then what's happening is you're going to end up filling it from the center well the center is actually the outlet so that means that you're going to be putting fresh oil but unfiltered oil through the middle of it and that's not what you want you're going to then start off with unfiltered oil going through your engine so there's an argument to be made whether clean but unfiltered oil is better than having no oil but when you start up the engine and it's just at idle it, there's really not much force on the bearings even on a big diesel like this so uh, most manufacturers recommend to not pre-fill the oil although there is some variety there all right these are both on now uh, and now we're gonna drain the oil out of the pan and refill it all right so the uh, drain plug for the oil pan is here at the back of the engine which on this Prevo being a rear engined bus or diesel pusher is uh, forward on the bus side the drain plug size is 1 and 1 16th so got a wrench on it got a little helper <coughs> As you can see, it's got little seepage back here, but nothing that I'm concerned about. Okay, we've got this to where it's hand tight now. Now, remember at the beginning, I pointed out that this has 10 gallons of oil in it. This is not a 10 gallon oil uh, drain pan. So similar to like what I did when I changed the fluid on my uh, Allison transmission right there, I'm going to plan to drain some of the oil and then come back and drain more of it. On my old RV, there was enough space underneath the engine that I could fit one of the five gallon oil pails and I could just drain directly into that. That was super convenient, but here there's not enough space for it. So I, I may just have to buy a better oil pan at some point in time, but we'll just work with what we got here and hopefully I don't get too much oil on my skin. Like any diesel oil, it is black. Obviously that was nowhere near all of it, but I'm gonna put the plug back in, let that oil drain into the pan. You probably can't see here, uh, but this is not just an open pan. There's a drain hole in the middle. So when you have cold, thicker oil like this, it uh, sometimes builds up on the top. And then also I need to make sure that I don't overfill the pan. Uh, I will probably go empty this uh, as it is and then come back and then do another couple of pours. All right, at this point, we're gonna call this drained enough. Uh, obviously got the vast majority of it out. I've got the drain plug cleaned off. It is a magnetic drain plug, so you should check to see if there's any chunks of metal or anything on it, but there, there wasn't um, all clean like it's supposed to be. So from here, just gonna put it in, tighten it down, clean things off just a bit. I'll get the drain bucket out of the way so I can get good access to tighten it down fully. It's all good and tightened, so now we're gonna go ahead and fill the engine back up. We're now ready to put oil back into the engine. The fill port on the Series 60 is right here. You've got this fill plug that is tightened uh, by tightening this screw here. So you have to loosen the screw, and then it took a rather significant tug to get it out. 
So that's actually what you want. If you watch my video on changing the transmission fluid, the transmission has a dipstick tube uh, plug that's basically the same style as this, and it had uh, fallen apart over the years, so nice to see this one in good shape. Now I've got my funnel, which goes in here. Because the uh, this fill plug is on a chain, uh, interferes a little bit with the funnel, so it isn't really wanting to stay in there, but I'll just work with that. And now comes the part where you might uh, find yourself thinking that you would be better off with uh, a bunch of one gallon jugs instead of a five gallon jug because the five gallon ones are fairly heavy and a little bit more unwieldy. I can skip arm day today, I guess. Now I'm going to do my second five gallon pail. Since I've never done an oil change on this before and the uh, oil that came out seemed like it was probably more in maybe the eight or nine gallon range, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up part way, probably try to get about three gallons out of it, check the oil on the dipstick, make sure that it's at the full mark uh, before I start the engine. Then uh, after I've run the engine, let it shut down, uh, cool off, let all the drain, oil drain uh, down it back into the oil pan, and then I'll check it again and get it topped off. With experience, you'll find the exact amount that you need to put in, including whatever the filters are going to take up. But since this is the first time I'm doing this, it'll take a little bit more trial and error. That gets us pretty much right to the full mark which means that it's probably gonna go down to about the uh, fill mark after I run the engine. So we'll call that full enough to go ahead and do our initial run on the engine, get it up to oil pressure, and then we'll let things shut down. All right, oil pressure gauge is up here. Let's uh, start up the engine and see how quickly it gets oil pressure. Well, that was nice and quick. We'll let it run for a few seconds, then we'll shut it down and uh, check the oil. I got the engine topped off. It took a little bit under the 10 gallons of oil. There was just a little bit left over, which I then put into another jug to take with me as some extra oil. I've put about a thousand miles on the engine so far. Honestly, I can't tell any difference between the oil, and normally you're not going to tell a difference unless you were running an oil that was really poorly suited for the engine uh, and then switched to a good one, or vice versa. I'm not sure what oil was in this before. I think it was Rotella, but I didn't have any oil consumption issues at all. And now with the first thousand miles behind me, I haven't had any oil consumption on it either. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. And as always, thanks for watching.